Welcome to the SL1 technical video series. In this video, Josh will show you how to set up and configure SL1 machine learning based anomaly detection. So taking a look at our Acme business service, we can see that there's a few things of interest. So we are green from an availability perspective, but we do have a few major events that we haven't addressed yet. So in this particular case, looking at my visual, I can see that I'm looking at a few Linux servers, 88 and 87, that have their major events. So I'm gonna click on the events tab, scroll down and take a look. And I can see that there's a few things going on. So in one case, I'm looking at a swap memory usage. In another case, I'm looking at CPU usage. So there's a couple things going on. So in this case, I'm actually going to click on 87 and go to the investigator to take a deeper look. So I can see, just like I saw before, I have a swap memory usage issue, a CPU usage issue. And if you take a look on the left-hand side, the pattern that we're seeing there looks kind of what you would expect from a CPU, and that it's kind of bouncing up and down depending on the workload of the system. But the thing that's interesting is right here in the middle, for several hours, everything flatlines. And it is flatlined at 100, so you could reasonably assume that it's because of the workload of the, the system. But I don't actually know that for sure, so I'm going to turn on anomaly detection to take a deeper look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the left-hand side, click on the machine learning tab. And I got a few devices on this machine, so I made a safe search just to keep this demo quick. So in this case, I'm going to click on 88 and 87, the two devices that we were looking at from before. At the bottom of the screen, I'm just going to click Enable. I'm going to pick the metric that I'm interested in. So remember, we're dynamic apps. We were looking at CPU data and the overall system usage. And then I'm going to click Enable Machine Learning. So from a workflow perspective, that's how you turn on the anomaly detection. But there's a lot going on. So it might be just a couple of clicks, but there's actually a lot that's happening in the background. So in this particular case, we're dealing with CPU data. So if we had any historical information, what we're going to do is we're going to pull that information into the system, and we're going to run a bunch of analysis on it. And the idea here is that we have several algorithms that we could choose to build a model from, but we want to make sure that we pick the best algorithm to build the best model possible. So it's to say that for each device and each metric, we're going to build a model that is custom for your device. So now that I've enabled that, I'm going to click back over to my business service. And I can see that to the right of the events tab, I have a new tab for anomalies for the two devices that I enabled this for. So I actually let it run for a few hours. And if you remember from before, we were flatlining right around 100. But in this particular case, if you look at the green line in the, the center of the line chart there, you can see that, again, we're flatlining, but this time it's around 45, which is really interesting because how would you be able to predict that? Is it going to plateau at 45 or 55 percentage use? You don't actually know. And the power of machine learning here is that we're going to learn organically from the data itself. So as we collect new information, we retrain the model and we relearn. In this particular case, if you look at the red dots, you see that we did indeed predict these as anomalies. With SL1, you can quickly enable machine learning based anomaly detection, automatically select the right algorithm for your data metrics, automatically train your algorithms with historical performance data.